Hello everyone, my name is Anton Pelcher. I'm an engineer and I've been construction fish farms for more than 10 years. If you are watching this video, then most likely you are already interested, sincerely and greatly interested in the topic of fish farming in RAS. Let's talk about the money it takes to build a RAS farm. Of course, it's ideal if you have your own farms. You've saved them or you just had them. And you can invest them and build a fish farm entirely with your own money. But let's look at things realistically. As a rule of thumb, in most cases your own money and full scope are practically never available. They either don't exist at all, and it's the worst case. Either you have them, but partially. That is, this is the most common scenario, when a future fish farmer has part of the money to start a fish farm, but the money that is available is not enough to go through a farm construction and its start up. And just like that, today we're going to discuss what to do if you don't have enough money for the farm construction. Where can you borrow money? Watch this video to the end, because we're going to discuss not only where to get the money from, but also how to get it. The first alternative is credit or loan. The most obvious thing that comes to mind when you think about where in principle to get money from. Let's break it down. There are several types of loans. The first is a consumer loan. That's when I, as an individual, apply to a bank for a credit line and I get money as an individual. In practice, the maximum amount of such loans is not high. In my country, it presumes an average up to 50,000, 70,000 US dollars. But if you don't have an official salary, or it's not high enough, if you don't have a good credit history, then most likely you will be approved for a smaller amount. Generally, this is also not bad and can be some kind of addition to the money you already have. Well, probably there are no people who have not applied for a loan once in life. If you, like me, have fallen for the banks and taken their loans, press the like button. Basically, it's okay. And we continue. The second option is a business loan. It differs from a consumer loan in that this loan is no longer obtained by an individual, but by an organization, a legal entity. In practice, to be honest, I have met very few entrepreneurs who have received loans on good conditions without having to run after banks for several years. Sure, if you have a large corporation and you deal with banks all the time, and they often provide you loans, of course it's easier for you. But most people, most companies, don't work with banks on a regular basis. So in order to get loans, you're going to have to go the whole way. And the first difficulty you have to go through is collateral. Any bank will require you to have collateralized property. Why? If I, as individual, borrow small amounts, I'm responsible to the bank with my own property. Then when a legal entity takes a loan, as it's a limited liability company, and if this company has no assets on its balance sheet, the bank takes risks to lend money. This is because business loans usually presume not a couple of thousands of US dollars, but hundreds of thousands of US dollars. This means that the bank runs the risk of receiving a debt debt which is impossible to collect, or it will take the bank many years to recollect the debt amount. This is why the bank needs guarantees and insurance. The first thing it insures itself with is collateral. What is this? These are any liquid assets that are in your possession and which you can pledge to the bank. This will be a guarantee in case you suddenly fail to pay back the loan. Prepare for the following that any property will be appraised 30 to 50 percent lower in value than its real market value is. Why is this being done? In fact, the bank is essentially reinsuring itself for the second time in case it receives this property on its balance sheet and it will need to sell it quickly. And this is not always profitable, so it's more profitable for the bank to value your company property lower than its real market value. The next important factor is the company turnover. Here lies the most interesting news. It lies in the fact that as a rule it's in your business as you plan to open a fish farm. You set up a separate legal entity or a peasant farm enterprise and you want to get a loan to this recently established legal entity. The bank treats this entity as a zero-rated firm. That is, it has no balance sheet, no financial history, so it becomes too risky for a loan. And to get a loan for your main activity field, an already existing company. What can I say? As a rule, you will not want to get a loan to your main company, because your main field of activity doesn't correspond to new field of activity national classifiers of types of economic activities, and so on. And so we get a little bit of a strange situation. That is, the current business and company, which already have a decent turnover, is not appropriate for applying for the loan. 
and as far as new business activity is concerned, you have a so-called zero legal entity with no history, which the bank doesn't want to credit. And that's what entrepreneurs constantly have to struggle with in order to prove the bank to somehow affiliate their main legal entity, provide collateral liquid property. I think a lot of you have already come across such a situation. And the possibility for this property to be sold quickly is of great importance. We'll talk more about liquidity in the leasing format. What is leasing? And which way is it different from a bank loan? If you get a loan, the bank lends you a certain amount of money, which you have to pay back including the bank interest rate. What's the difference to leasing? Leasing is just about certain equipment and machinery, and it's common practice. How does it work? The bank buys the equipment from the supplier or third party using its own assets and leases it to you and you actually become to lessee of this equipment. What's the tricky issue here? Since you are only leasing this equipment with the right of subsequent purchase, it becomes risky that you will refuse this equipment after some time, and it will fall on the bank's balance sheet, and the bank will have to do something about it. And that's when the issue of liquidity emerges. For example, agricultural equipment or car, or specific industrial equipment, which is required at any production, including a fish farm. This is exactly the kind of non-liquid property. That's how a leasing company approaches it. That's why getting a lease is probably even more difficult than getting a business loan. So be prepared to prove the bank in some way that you can get a lease. Most likely in this case too, your company's history will be involved and checked thoroughly by the bank there will be collateralized property involved, just as it happens when getting a business loan. Now let's consider investors. What are they? Everyone probably knows who they are. If you deal with a bank, if you take a loan from it, or if you take property from a leasing company, this is actually a company which you cooperate with. In the case of an investor, you get money from a private person, a certain private person provides the investment to your business. This can be done in different formats. It can be in the form of a loan, in the form of official participation in the business, that is, in a certain share of the business. In practice, I'll be honest, it mostly presumes getting some share of your business by the investor. Thus, you involve a certain person who is also interested in doing this business. He invests his money, either role or part of it. You are as the initiator and launch the business. What are the pros and cons? Let's talk about the pros first. Most likely, you won't have to prepare a whole bunch of documents. You just have to convince the person to invest into the business. You won't have to prepare collateral. You won't have to show the company's turnover history. All of this organizational procedure that you have in dealing with banks. And generally, we're through with the advantages. What are the disadvantages of this story? Most likely, if an investor invests all of his own money into the business, he'll claim the lion's share of the profits from that business for himself as a return on his investment. And be prepared that you are likely to be left with no more than 30% of the total profits of the farm. And then perhaps, depending on the arrangements, this 30% may be paid to you when the farm pays off. This will depend, shall we say, on the negotiations with your private investor. Each case is very individual. Second point. When you deal with banks, all the conditions are regulated and defined. When you work with private investors, especially if you are not a professional in the business and the investor is a non-professional investor, it's likely that a lot a lot of agreements will be unofficial in words. These agreements in words very often lead to all kinds of conflicts. When the firm starts bringing money, pays off, everything generally goes fine. When something changes, when it doesn't bring money, conflicts begin. Because it may turn out that one part understood it this way, the second part understood it that way. So right away, let me give a recommendation. If you suddenly go into business together with someone, with an investor, write everything down, sign complete documents regulating all your relationships, and most importantly, pay special attention to the terms of the exit from this common business. The main disadvantage of this type of financing is finding such a person. This is probably the most difficult, at least in my country. I'll be honest, it's not common practice. Well, I've probably seen very few cases when someone was able to attract an investor and work well and effectively together. 
And even if you even manage to find one, it will take a long time to prove to a potential investor that this business will be really profitable and that he needs to get in there. Most likely, he will ask you to prepare lots of iterations of business plans, proof of profit documents, will ask you for various figures, and will test you until he is 100% sure that he can invest his money in this business. This is normal, the investor can also be understood, but for you, it implies a threat of long negotiations a large number of figures and papers to be provided, and often in the end, it will not result in success, although there are successful cases, of course. I am by no means saying it's a completely wrong. In my experience, which is more than seven years in the field, I have dealt with hundreds, if not thousands of clients who wanted to attract an investor. Well, frankly speaking, only few of them succeeded. Thus, be prepared to a thorny path, but the result is quite realistic. If you want to go all the way, and you know how to do it, it. And the next option is state support. Many people think that getting money from the state is unrealistic, and I will take a risk to refute this opinion. In fact, I refer to my country, as in the country where I live, a certain amount of money is allocated every year to support farmers, and real farmers, including my company clients, have received this support. Let's talk about what state support measures are available in general. Let's start with the obvious. There is federal and there is regional support. For example, there are several types of grants. In my country, the most basic measure of supporting the beginning farmers is a special grant called Agro Startup. What does it presume? It's a grant to a beginning farmer in the amount of up to approximately 75,000 US dollars, though in reality it implies low amounts. In different regions, the amount may vary. This money is issued to the farmer and he can spend it on the construction of the building, on the equipment purchase. Every year, in the regional Ministry of Agriculture, this program is raffled off. There is a competition and a number of farmers receive such grants for fish farms as well as in other areas of agriculture. Of course, it's a small amount, and most likely it will not be enough to set up a full-fledged big business, but it's quite realistic to get this money, at least in my country. If you try hard, you can cope with that and get this type of support. As a rule, you have more chances to get the grant if you have an existing building or your own funds partially. Then the grant support will contribute to building a more or less industrial-scale fish farm in terms of productivity. Because I live in Russia, I'm talking about the realities in my country only, and I'm very interested in how this happens in other countries. If anyone watching this video has already had the experience dealing with grants, subsidies from the government, then by all means write in the comments, share your experience, so that other potential farmers can see and learn that. Next, subsidy for purchasing equipment. Officially, it's called something like this, compensation of the cost of fixed assets acquiring. Sometimes it may even include construction, but usually it implies technological equipment, res equipment. What's the difference between a grant and a subsidy? When you get a grant, you win the grant and you get money up front, and you can use it to build a farm. When you get a subsidy, you get it post facto. Thus, you first have to build a farm, invest money, then collect the documents, prove your costs, and only then get the reimbursement in the subsidy format. In fact, not each and every region of my country offers subsidies. But if this type of state support exists, the regional authorities compensate from 20, that's a minimum, and up to 60% as compensation for the cost of all fixed assets. And the last measure of state support, which is probably one of the main ones which is more or less available in my country. This is concessional lending or preferential loan. In my country, this is a federal program. It's provided by the Federal Ministry of Agriculture in cooperation with various banks. You can apply to the bank, the bank will apply to the Federal Agriculture Ministry, and a part of the cost of the interest rate on a loan will be compensated. Thus, you get a commercial loan, but with a preferential rate. And finally, let's talk about how exactly you can get money to build a fish farm if you don't have enough funds. Let's first summarize everything that has been mentioned before. 
In general, I'll say right away that the most common ways of obtaining borrowed money are loans, leasing, investor funds, state support. Though these ways vary from one country to other, of course. That is, the steps are different. But, first of all, let's summarize everything in regards to the loans. You have to provide collateral and it's very desirable for you to have decent company turnover and be able to affiliate an additional company to prove and provide turnover and collateral from the main company in support of a new business activity. So, where do you apply for the loan? Of course, you have to go to the bank, just like in case of getting a consumer loan. And by the way, a consumer loan is a relatively simple option compared to a business loan. Next, investor involvement. I honestly told you that I have little experience dealing with investors. And my clients, my acquaintances, few people have been able to attract funds from the investors. And if they did, it was from a friend, a colleague, a relative or an acquaintance. Next, estate support. In order to apply for state support, you either need to contact the Ministry of Agriculture of your country or region, which will provide and explain all the measures of state support in detail and tell you what documents need to be prepared. You can find everything on the website of the local Ministry of Agriculture. As a rule, this is an application form. This is a confirmation that you have a legal entity. This is your personal data and a business plan. And based on all that documentation, the Ministry of Agriculture decides whether to admit you to the contest for state business support or not, and then there is a whole process of getting that support. These are the major existing possibilities of getting borrowed money. And this is Anton Pelcher. Press the like button, subscribe to my channel, the channel on how to grow fish and make good money.